The elements of the periodic table exist in different oxidation states. All these oxidation states have a different free enthalpy. You can get the energy difference between two oxidation states from the reduction potential. A graphical representation can help understand the abstract concept of reduction potentials. The Frost-Ebsworth diagram shows which oxidation states from a certain element are stable and which states tend to disproportionate. You can see very easily which states tend to act as oxidizing agents and which as reducing agents. The diagram shows the oxidation state on the x-axis. The so-called volt equivalents are shown on the y-axis. Volt equivalents are n times E0 or minus delta G divided by F. I want to show you how to construct and interpret such a diagram. I will demonstrate the construction of the frost diagram of ruthenium in its different oxidation states with the corresponding oxides. First, we need a collection of reduction potentials between the different ruthenium species. Each oxidation state that you want to put on the diagram has to appear at least once. And not only that, all oxidation states somehow have to be connected with the oxidation state zero. For instance, we have the reduction from ruthenium-8 to ruthenium-4 in the last row, then from ruthenium-4 to ruthenium-2 in the third row, from ruthenium-2 we can get to ruthenium-0. Now you can calculate the free enthalpy of each species relative to each other, the so-called n times E0. The oxidation state 0 always has the energy 0. You need the reduction potential between ruthenium 0 and ruthenium 2 to calculate the energy level of ruthenium 2. The slope between two species corresponds to their reduction potential. You will get the energy level of ruthenium 2 when you multiply the number of electrons with the reduction potential of this reaction. The energy level of ruthenium-2 is 0.91 volts. You can see that ruthenium-2 is thermodynamically less stable than ruthenium-0. Next is ruthenium-3. We have got the reduction potential between ruthenium-3 and ruthenium-2. We have just calculated the energy level of ruthenium-2. The slope between ruthenium-2 and ruthenium-3 is 0.249 volts. With this information at hand, we can calculate the energy level of ruthenium-3. We also have the reduction potential between ruthenium-4 and ruthenium-2. We can calculate the energy level of ruthenium-4 with the energy level of ruthenium-2 and the slope between ruthenium-2 and ruthenium-4. We get all remaining energy levels according to the same principle. The slope between all species is positive. This makes sense because all reduction potentials are positive as well. The green points show the energy level relative to the oxidation state zero. Ruthenium-8 has an NE value of 8.7 volts, for example. What can we learn from that? The slope between ruthenium zero and ruthenium-8 gives us the hypothetical reduction potential between these two species. In this case, the reduction potential is 1.09 volts. The Gibbs energy can be calculated with the NE value and the Faraday constant F. Ruthenium tetroxide has a delta G of approximately minus 840 kilojoules per mole. This means a reduction of one mole ruthenium tetroxide to ruthenium zero can release up to 840 kilojoules energy. We can see on the diagram that ruthenium-8 is the thermodynamically least stable state. It is generally valid. On the top right we have strong oxidizing agents and on the top left we have strong reducing agents. The frost diagram shows whether or not a certain state tends to disproportionate. Ruthenium-3 lies on a concave point. Therefore, this species is thermodynamically stable. A solution that contains the two neighboring species rather tends to comproportionate to ruthenium-3. Ruthenium-6, on the other hand, lies on a convex point. The weighted average of species 4 and 7 lies below the energy level of ruthenium-6 and therefore this state tends to disproportionate. We don't actually know 
whether or not the disproportionation takes place and to what extent. The frost diagram shows only thermodynamic relationships. It might be that a disproportionation is kinetically not possible because there is a too high activation energy needed for this process to take place. The element cerium in its oxidation state 4 is a strong oxidizing agent. Is cerium 4 capable of oxidizing ruthenium 2? The reduction potential of cerium 4 to cerium 3 is 1.7 volts. Therefore, the slope between cerium 3 and cerium 4 is 1.7 on the frost diagram. The reduction potential of the oxidizing agent has to be more positive than the reduction potential of ruthenium for the reaction to take place. Only then the electrons flow downhill in energy. The slope between cerium-3 and cerium-4 has to be higher than between ruthenium-2 and ruthenium-3. Only then the process takes place. You can calculate this if you don't believe me. You will find though that the potential of this whole process is positive and therefore the delta G is negative. The process takes place spontaneously. Here you can see again the most important messages of the frost diagram. The last point is very important. All potentials are relative to the standard hydrogen electrode. If the slope or the potential is positive, this redox pair is capable of oxidizing hydrogen. I hope you enjoyed this video. Share it with someone else to help them understand the subject better. If you have more questions or feedback, write a comment in the section below. If you haven't studied enough yet, subscribe to my channel and watch the next video.